we do a tillage um, pass in the fall if we have to get in early. We can also leave the rye residue throughout the winter as a ground cover and then incorporate that in the spring. But you can feel that rye. It's actually, it's very high C to N ratio, but it's pretty friable, so it's pretty easy to incorporate in. Um, but this is, again, a bit of a weedier example of what we've typically experienced here at the station, which I'm attributing it to issues with um, the, the canopy closure in this kind of drought impacted crop. So if we get 35 bushel an acre, I'd be pretty happy. Last year we were about 60 bushel an acre, which for organic soybeans at 30, 32 bushel an acre, that's pretty good. <laughs> Um, we're really happy with those yields and they're usually around either on par with our typically managed soybeans which are again just like the corn with a couple tine weeding passes, a couple rotary hoeings, a couple row cultivations. Um, sometimes those yields are suppressed though so one of the things we're working on is um, to see if we do do a pre-plant nitrogen or not pre-plant at plant or side dress nitrogen will that help boost our soybean yields we of course have to run the economic numbers because does the does the yield increase justify that pass over the field the fuel the cost of the fertilizer but just trying to understand too the dynamics of the system and why we're seeing that kind of yield suppression has anyone tried organic no-till soybeans on their farm Jared, <laughs> how's it gone for you? It works sometimes, but uh, a lot of uh, anticipation. We're going to take some clover that just transitioned organic down, and try. I think I think fighting after corn silage or not is too risky. You've said that several times. I'm just you know repeating what you've said. So I think especially being a little 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 the legume and then have some end credits for the soybeans the next year because the rye is not going to use all of it just like 99.7 percent or whatever ridiculous yeah. amount. But uh, it's it's more surefire than uh, a lot of the other no-till systems. For sure. And Jared is way up north, <laughs> so he's as as challenging of the <laughs> places you could try this system. What about the drilling beans? Half yeah, but. no, great question. I get that question a lot. So drilling versus um, planting, I, they both can work. I, I, I don't think, and Leia, feel and Leia's around, she can definitely comment too. She just went back there. Leia, drilling versus, what do you prefer? Leia works for the Rodale Institute, and she's a crop consultant. So well, what do you recommend, drilling versus 30-inch rows? They are grown or in, in no-till? No-till. Uh, well, the research station, we only did it two years and we didn't see a big difference actually. So I wouldn't, I mean, if you have a planter, I think planting is better because you always have plan B. But if you don't have a planter, you can try drilling. That's what I would say. Yeah, so when Leia says plan B, what she's talking about is going through with a high residue cultivator. So if you have a really weedy mass, if you're on 30 inch rows, you can always cultivate. Um, but as Leia said, I just wanted to confirm, I wasn't misremembering. We've gotten great results on seven and a half inch rows too, but not necessarily better. Maybe this year it would have been better with the weed suppression because maybe we would have gotten better canopy closure. But um, again, it goes back to, it, it, even though our Jessica and Brian's data shows that the planter doesn't make a difference, as, as Brian teases me, um, there were times where I would be planting and the, the seed would just be kind of dribbling underneath the rye residue. So it it doesn't, um, it can, there can be real planter failures. And in wet years, even if the soybeans underneath that residue, as long as it's wet, it still might germinate. Soybeans just an amazingly resilient crop, which is one of the reasons why it does so much better than organic no-till corn. Um, but if you can get the drill to get the seed in the ground, drill might be better for that option, like I mentioned, of planting first into the standing rye and then crimping over it because drills, they just don't have the same precision necessarily. Go ahead, Jared. It's funny though, because what Brian said, I believe the John Deere no-till drills do actually have built in the rolling seed firmer versus a lot of the, the row crop planters on 30 inches are, are using the more the key, the st st yeah, static one that, that drags the seed. So it's kind of funny, his, his research might show that there might actually be times where a drill is better. And if you can predict the weather for the next four months, then that just makes all the better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm always thinking, because I just knew what the weather was going to be like. I think Aaron's point is, like, the 
planter doesn't make a difference up to a point. Like I think if you meet the minimum and we haven't quite defined what that threshold for down pressure is, I, it seems like anything above that doesn't matter. But I think there is that threshold. I think we just kind of overshot it. Like our low down pressure was just over that threshold already. So we didn't see a difference between our low and high treatments because we had, we just, we had enough. But you can even kind of see here, like I think, so the headlands were planted with a different planter and the headlands are far weedier than our plots are, I believe. I mean, it's hard to say sometimes, but the headlands I think are worse than our actual plots are and the, the headlands were with the station planter. And that again could come down to the canopy closure issue, which has is really exacerbated this year. If you don't get the plant population, the canopy closure, the rye eventually will stop suppressing the weeds and it will look weedier. So there, you know, there can be planter effects. I think I just, it's hard to find them.